going on guys? Shane here back with Coach PJ. Oh yeah. And we are here today to talk about one of the most highly anticipated heavyweight rematches, Wilder Fury 2. I'm going to put you on the spot. Who do you think won the first fight? Oh, man, you can't ask me that on camera. <laughs> man, no, just kidding. Me, like a lot of boxing fans around the world, truly thought Tyson Fury won that close fight last year. Yeah, one of my best friends who hates Tyson Fury and absolutely loves the anti Wilder, he also agrees with you that, that yeah. Fury won that fight. Today we're going to look at some key points. From the first fight, Tyson Fury, we saw those jabs, what I call the towel whipping jab, and a lot of great feints. We saw his clinching on the inside range and those head movement patterns that ultimately got him in trouble in the ninth and the 12th round. And then from Deontay Wilder, we're going to take a look at his patience, which led to energy conservation, how he sets up that power combo, and then one minor adjustment that helped him secure the draw in the first fight. But first, just so you don't get confused with who's who, I'll be playing Deontay Wilder. No, I'm sorry. I'll be playing Tyson Fury. <laughs> oh, there you go. Oh, looks good on you, man. I'll be playing Tyson Fury. Mm. Coach PJ will be Deontay Wilder. Hey. <laughs> Let's take a look at Bomb some squad. <laughs> Let's take a look at some tactics from the first fight. All right, guys. So first thing we're going to look at was the outside fighting that was done very well by Tyson Fury. Mm -hmm. Range and distance was probably my biggest observa observation in this fight. I felt like Fury did a really good job on the outside, really good job on the inside, and he had parts in mid medium range where he did really well. And we're going to talk more about that. But the first thing that I saw was his jabs and his feints and how he was able to keep Wilder hesitant and just land jab after jab, racking up the points on the scoreboards. Mm -hmm. That's funny. Fury was able to win a lot of rounds by just by keeping Deontay Wilder occupied. Not even just with the jab, he would faint with his head. He would move him. Remember, famously, yeah. he stuck his tongue out at one point. Yeah. Right? <laughs> yeah. So he's yeah. using the jab to faint, he's using his head to faint, but he's also using his footwork and moving around Deontay Wilder. Nullifying that right hand. Yeah, and it's just point after point. Point, mm -hmm. point, point. And the whole time Wilder's trying to land those power shots. He's trying to land that right hand. But racking up the points, I mean, you got to understand that it's round by round in this game of boxing. Mm -hmm. The one thing I talked about was the towel whipping jab. This is this is something that I think about in my mind when I watch this. And you can see it in slow motion in some of the, the replays from the fight. When he throws it, yeah, you can see that his wrist curls before he throws it. And the reason why I call it the towel whipping is imagine, you know, when you roll a towel up and you whip it at someone, it has to be very loose. It can't be firm until the very end. And that's what uh, Fury does a great job mm. of, staying really loose with his jab, which adds to the speed, and it doesn't take as much energy. So he goes, bang, right here, bang. And it isn't firm until the point of impact. So he's loose, 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 even from the wrist, elbow, shoulder, bang. And then he doesn't really turn it over, too. It's almost like a backhand, but he still tries to make contact with the knuckles by the time it lands, because in boxing, can't actually hit with the back of the hand, so I wouldn't be able to do this to PJ. It is illegal, but it not only kept Deontay Wilder out of play, Wilder was actually looking at this, Fury could keep him here, and then that jab doesn't have to be a lot of power. His jab is just touching him, and it's keeping Deontay Wilder back. He's not able to drive forward with that power. Yeah. So again, another way that Fury was using that range. Yeah, just to nullify that right hand from Wilder. If it's actively defending, and we've noticed uh, from previous fights with Wilder, he has success with that right hand when he's moving forward, mm -hmm. not when he's standing still, not when the pressure's being put on him. So that was one of the biggest takeaways for me, was that jab with the feints from the outside. Even though uh, we saw Fury circling out to the left towards the power hand, he's still the taller, longer fighter, he's got the longer reach, and he was mm -hmm. able to use that and to stay at bay and keep uh, keep Wilder away with that jab. Right. The next is how good he did with the clinch. The number one entry that I saw in this fight was when Wilder would throw that right hand, mm -hmm. he would use his long guard with his left hand. So most of the time he was down here in that Philly shell, but when he saw that right hand come in, he would protect his jaw, he would reach forward, and a lot of times he would either get an overhook here or he would control the head. I forget what round it, it was in, but he was he had his back up against the ropes. So let's show that back up against the ropes, through that right hand, went over top here, and then he controlled the head, and he let go right before he threw the uppercut, because you can't pull down on the head when you do that, but if you let go right in time, then he switched and went cross face, turning Wilder into the ropes. So That's changing, experience, yeah, a lot of experience, getting off of the ropes, putting your opponent onto the ropes. Um, but I remember you had a really good point about changing the length of a round, utilizing Oh, that, that was the biggest thing. That's a real veteran move, and you see Fury doing it with, with ease. Whenever he would get a chance to clinch and Wilder throws that hand, if he gets underneath here, immediately this right hand has no more power. Then a referee would come in, Jack Reese is breaking him up, but then Wilder gets held on for a few more seconds, taking 15, 10 seconds off every single time. Taking that three minute round down to about two minutes where Fury has a lot less things to think about 
with that right hand coming at him. Yeah, yeah, it, and it, that's that's what it ultimately comes down to is you're nullifying that power mm -hmm. from Deontay Wilder, and you're taking time away from him to be able to do that. We just talked about how Wilder does well moving forward, but he often jams himself up because exactly. he does, you know, his power's at the end of his punches, but if he's moving forward, if uh, Fury can crash the range or it can effectively clinch up, mm -hmm. then he's gonna take that away from him. Those are really two big ways to make someone miss in boxing, either being too far away from them or being too close. Yeah. And again, the veteran that has, has had all the experience showed that and was able to use it really well. But he also had great head movement. I yeah. think that was probably one of the best things that kept Fury winning rounds was using his constant head movement. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, the one that I kept seeing was the slip roll. Every mm. time uh, Deontay would throw a jab cross, which was a common combo, he would slip the jab, he'd roll underneath the cross. Fading off to his left, or I'm sorry, to his right, and compressing down was a pattern that we saw over and over and over again, right? So whether it was a feint or as a jab, he'd go here, and then he would roll underneath, where he would slip and he would pull. Mm. The only thing is, when you do it over and over and over again for 11 rounds in a row, uh, in fact, it was the ninth round that I think uh, Deontay Wilder got keen to it, and he picked up on it. Mm -hmm. He found that pattern. That's kind of ultimately what led to the knockdowns. You do something over and over again, you're going to be susceptible to being taken advantage of. And in that position, he's really stuck. At one point, you're going to be able to time and hit that right hand well. But one of the really good parts about Fury's head movement was that when he was backing up, he was able to use the Philly shell in a way mm -hmm. that would actually make his length even farther. Normal guys can kind of just sit here. When I roll from this position, I can still get caught with the right hand. But what Fury would do is use his shoulder roll and lean back into the ropes, not only taking up all the steam from the punch, but then keeping his distance away where he could either clinch or get inside. So his head movement was really good at some points. Yeah, as, as, as the taller fighter, as a taller fighter especially, you know, deflecting, getting that upward trajectory mm -hmm. on the punch. Um, and outside we talked about how he did really well. Inside on the clinch he did really well. And there was times in, in midi medium range in that danger zone where he did well. And I noticed there was times that he was putting the pressure on Wilder. When mm -hmm. Wilder was on, on, you know, on the defense, when he was backing up, he wasn't able to get his right hand off. That's right. And that's when uh, we saw that Fury was doing really well. It wasn't until the later rounds when he got a little bit tired that he got stuck, he got a little bit slower, and he got caught. So let's mm -hmm. take a look at uh, what Wilder did right. All right, now some critics may say that Deontay Wilder is an inactive fighter, but I think that's kind of his strategy. That's his style, no? Right. He's a special fighter. Legendary right-hand power. Some people even say that he's one of the hardest-hitting heavyweights of all time. Not only is he able to have power in the left and the right hand, but when you have the mindset to just land that one punch, you don't throw a lot of punches. You're not thinking about winning rounds in boxing. You're thinking about taking someone out of there on a stretcher. So it's really a wonderful way and patient habit that Deontay Wilder has been showing and throwing. Now, it's a really risky thing to just think about that one punch. And it's, a, it's a gamble. It's a super gamble. But yeah. right now, Deontay Wilder is at 100%. He knocks out just about every person he yeah. fights. Yeah. And he's able to set up that right hand from the first round all the way up to the 12th round. Yeah. Super dangerous, man. So we talked about patterns and how Tyson Fury kind of followed a pattern with his head movement. Mm -hmm. You can tell he definitely trained for that pattern of Deontay Wilder's favorite combo, which yeah. we know uh, just based on his fights, is he kind of hops in, feigning a jab, and then he throws a right hand, follows it up with a left hook. All right, so let's break that down a little bit. What he does is it's kind of like a hopping step, right? And, and traditionally and like conventionally, people would say that's incorrect. But what I think happens is people go, holy crap, this is Deontay Wilder, here comes that right hand that I, we trained hard against to not get hit by, and you kind of have a moment where you freeze up. So what he'll do is he'll hop in, and this is a feint, we get that reaction, then he's got this huge right hand, boom, and then he follows it up with a left hook. And what we saw from Fury was, he was effectively defending against it. Mm -hmm. he, was, he was moving his head, he was slipping, right? And he was rolling underneath. So if, if we were to properly do that, right? You throw that, you step in, you throw the right hand, and I go underneath, now the left hand isn't even there, right? You're probably not even gonna follow up if, if you missed with the right hand and I create mm -hmm. it and I go off. However, we talked about energy conservation and how wild are so good at that. Fury is gonna start to fade, mm -hmm. right? He was taking punches to the body, he was getting jabbed in the body a lot, and he's constantly moving doing this from round one. This takes calories, this takes energy to do this, to do these feints, to do the footwork, and he's got a lot of weight that he's carrying around. So what's gonna happen is you're gonna to start to fade, right? Mm -hmm. And Wilder kind of keeps an even keel the whole time, so that's why he's allowed to have that power from the first to the 12th round. What we saw in the ninth round and in the 12th round from Fury was he kind of got stuck for a second. He went for the same thing, right? right? He saw that coming in and he went here and it, and it was just a minor adjustment from, from Wilder. 
instead of punching where his head was, he was like, all right, he keeps ducking his head. I'm just going to punch a little bit lower. He got him right behind the ear. That's what hurt him. And then the left hook is what put him down, right? So minor adjustments. And that's why when I see Wilder and the way he fights, it's he still, even though it doesn't have like the pretty technique, mm -hmm. I still think he has yeah. high IQ for, for a fighter. He keeps it simple. Um, but even though you know it's coming, you know that right hand's coming. You know it's coming. Eventually, you're going to make a mistake or you're going to get a little bit slower because of fatigue and you're going to get caught. All right, guys, so that's what we saw in the first fight. Let us know in the comments down below if we missed anything. Now let's talk about what we think is going to happen in the rematch. I just got to say, going back and watching that first fight again, what a great fight. Man, incredible What a great fight. fight. It, was like, it played out like a movie. Uh, super excited for this rematch. Who do you see winning? Oh, man, Why I am now? torn. I'm so torn. Yeah. Like my, my, my heart's telling me Fury. My, my, my boxing brain's telling me Wilder. I'm looking back and forth. I, I really, at the end of it, I'm going to sway and lean a little bit towards Tyson Fury winning by decision. I'm only seeing it either by decision or knockout, but I'm leaning in Fury not just because of the footwork, the boxing IQ, the knowledge, the experience, um, and a fully in shape, in camp Tyson Fury, but I'm looking at it now. That last fight, he was only six months removed from a couple of years off, battling with depression, suicide, alcoholism, getting all that weight. Um, right. and, and now we're getting a real vision of Tyson Fury. We're gonna really see what he's like when he goes to a full camp, when he changes things up, gets a new trainer. Uh, I'm, I'm really torn, but I think it's going to be an incredible fight, man. How do you see it? Yeah, I mean, I, I don't disagree with you. Um, we also heard that uh, Tyson Fury's been working with a strength and conditioning coach, and he's looking for the knockout in this fight. I so, heard that too. So it, it, I, I could see it, I could see it happening. Um, however, Deontay Wilder has a great chin. We kind of, it's kind of an underrated chin. He takes big hits from from a lot of his opponents, Fury included, who's a big dude and can get weight behind his shots, mm. and he really does eat those shots. I'm actually going to be leaning towards Wilder in this fight, mm. and here's why. is because I agree with you that uh, the, the, bo the boxer with better finesse um, and better technique and better skill is Tyson Fury. However, I think that he played an almost perfect game in the first fight. Almost perfect. Almost. Um, and he doesn't have that much more to improve upon. I mean, there's a lot of things that he can do. However, Wilder, I think, can make a lot of improvements going into this fight. Mm -hmm. And I think if he goes back and studies the film and watches some of the mistakes that he made and some of the openings that Tyson Fury left for him, mm. I could see him catching him even earlier. Um, I would like to see him work the body a little bit more. And I think those are things that we're going to see. I think if, um, if he finds his range a little bit more, if he doesn't allow Fury to crash the range on him and tie him up, if we see him work the body a little bit more, not just with straight punches, but there were times where he'd fake and get on the inside with liver shots and work the right hook to the body. If we start seeing that early on, uh, more jabs from Deontay Wilder, I think we're going to see him take this um, uh, and, and finish with a knockout. That's what I know. Yeah, so we'll see. What do you guys think? You got to comment down below. We got to get a, a discussion down below. <laughs> Until next time, uh, follow Coach PJ. Links are in the description below for his Instagram, for his YouTube channel, and subscribe to get the fight tips before your opponent does. I'm Shane. It's Coach PJ. Fight tips for the underdogs.